Welcome. Today is the last day of Thy Kingdom Come for this year. The prayer movement which calls um, individuals, families and churches to pray for their friends to come to know the love of Jesus. And this year, alongside our prayers, we've also been caring for our communities in this current pandemic. Well, tonight's service is going to include digital worship from across the diocese, some examples of creative prayer and some footage of how churches have been helping during the crisis. We're going to have Bible readings and later on Bishop Christopher is going to inspire us with reflection on those readings. So let's begin our service with a prayer. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, we're now going to have an action song. Please do feel free to join in with the actions, uh, whether you have children or not. And uh, it's going to remind us that uh, Jesus is the person that we want others to come into relationship with. One way, Jesus.
a reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 to 9. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said that on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. So the reading that you've just listened to talks about God providing a banquet for all people. And our churches have been in the front line of feeding those in need across the diocese. So let's see what three of those churches have been up to now. Isn't it curious how in times of great disaster, the extent of human kindness shines the brightest? It makes us united. It builds bridges over the walls we are so used to. It brings out the best in people. It shows the depth of human courage and sacrifice. We've been overwhelmed by our city's response to this crisis. We've clapped key workers and NHS heroes who put themselves in danger to help others. We've seen donations to our food banks treble. We've seen volunteers dedicate themselves to delivering food and medicine to those who need it. We smile all the harder at the moments that bring us joy. We've delivered gift bags to Kuwait's maternity ward and the city's refuges. We've seen people freed from debt. We've seen the homeless find a home. We've seen countless people offer help to those around them. And this is all just in our community. There is so much more to celebrate. We just want to take this moment to say thank you to all of you who've chosen kindness, to all of you who've chosen courage, to everyone who's done what they can, we see you, we celebrate you. We are here for you, Portsmouth. When you need a shoulder, when you need kindness, when you need help, we've got your back. Hi, welcome to St. Jude's Friday Fridge. So we're just now getting ready to open, just, just opened actually. We've got um, a couple of our guests who look very similar because they're twins, ready to, to take a bag. Um, so we have Scott here who is serving the bags all with his uh, protective gear on. Um, and then we have over here um, Graham who has doing, been doing the cooking and the cleaning and he's been doing a great job. And Ollie who's also been doing cooking and cleaning and also doing a great job. So what do we have in the bag? So we have, in the bag, we have, Scott, if you can just show. So we've got... We've got a nice burger and a bacon um, butty. Marvellous. And in that one, we've got a nice uh, cheese sandwich over here. Marvellous. And uh, we've got some well, odds and ends in here. Okay, we've got some porridge, we've got some uh, iced tea, we've got some obviously sugar for their tea, we've got a nice little, some rice pudding. Not an awful lot this week, we've got some uh, nice chocolate uh, honeycomb there, <laughs> which is really good, but we have, don't really stop there. We do have a surprise bag with lots of other bits of goodies over here as well, which is going to last. So. Marvellous. And we also have cups of tea ready made, and on this side, if Scott could move, <laughs> we have cups of coffee. Okay, so do you want to serve, um, serve our guests? Hello, Dave. One for you, one for you. Sorry. I've got the wrong way around after that, didn't I? <laughs> Take you in the day. And Dave, uh, take tea or a coffee and a bag for you. There, and one over here and one for you as well. So, and here we are. And God bless the pair of you. Have a lovely evening, won't you? Cheers. Good morning, I'm here at St Margaret's Community Church. We have a community food bank here open on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday um, from 8 till 11. And over this um, crisis period, um, we have just been really overwhelmed by the amount of need um, from our community and also really overwhelmed with the amount of people that have caught the vision and who have donated uh, food 
to our community food bank. So I'm just going to give you a little tour of what happens inside St Margaret's Community Food Bank. So I'm just heading into the church. We've got a great team of volunteers. This is Danielle. Hi. Danielle just come on board and she's been a real asset. And then this is, this is St Margaret's Church which has been um, turned into a community food bank. Here's all our kind of fresh stuff. This is Alex. Alex is the head chef at Sopranos and um, he's been making, what have you been making today Alex we've or got, yesterday? We've got meatball pasta, pesto pasta and a creamy veg soup. Fantastic. And over here, there's, um, there's food already bagged up. So how it works is people don't need a voucher. So we bag food up for couples, for families, and for single people. Uh, enough food um, to last two days. And then this is our kind of food store area where all the food comes in. This is Paul here. He's um, another one of our volunteers. And then over here is where people donate the food. People bring food in and, um, and we sort it all out. Morning. Thanks for that generous donation. It's really kind. So this is us. This is St. Margaret's Community Church. This is our response um, to the crisis. Um, the COVID-19 crisis. Um, it's been really amazing. Um, it's been amazing just seeing everyone catch the vision, everyone support it. Um, we've worked with some really um, generous people and we get weekly um, food deliveries from Morrisons. Um, but we've just been really overwhelmed by the response from our community. Meanwhile, there's been creative prayer for Thy Kingdom Come happening in homes across the diocese. One way we as a church have been helping people to pray in a creative way is by using a prayer chain. Do you want to show them, Claire? Claire? Oh. This is one that we did in church the other week and we're going to add some more to it over Pentecost in nice Pentecost colours. What are you praying for, Chloe? We're, I'm praying for the NHS. That's really important. And we pray for the NHS on a Thursday night as we clap too, don't we? And all of our key workers. Flo. We, we pray for the people that have the coronavirus. Pray for people with the coronavirus. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. So click that on. Well done. And my prayer today is for charities that work with those who are affected, both here and abroad, where people don't always have the wonderful health care that we do. We also and so then we lift up the chain in our hands and we ask God to, to answer these prayers and to send his Holy Spirit to be with all that we've been praying for and all who need a touch of him at the moment. And then the idea is that we can bring our family prayer chains together with other families who've been doing this and that when we're able to meet again as a small group of families in the park or even in the church building itself perhaps, we'll be able to see that our prayers, although that they've been distant from one another so far, are actually together and combined as our prayers all go up to our one Heavenly Father who hears and answers them all. If you love me, keep my
Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book, and gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the very significant ways in which churches have been supporting people during the outbreak is with our funeral ministry. Churches have been supporting bereaved families whose loved ones have died, but who have had to have funerals in very difficult circumstances. Um, although they're very small in numbers, really the clergy and ourselves have been treating it as if it's a perfectly normal funeral um, and doing everything we possibly can as normally as possible so that the families feel they're getting a proper funeral. But we have been suggesting to them that perhaps at a later date they could have a larger um, meeting with all their families, perhaps a memorial or thanksgiving service. Um, it's been a difficult time but I think we've worked very well with the clergy, we've been communicating very well, um, we, we chat about you know how we're going to get around the difficulties and all families have been wonderful through this time. They fully understand the situation, um, they understand that the reduced numbers at services aren't just for the crematorium's benefit or the church's benefit, it's for their benefit as well. It's safety, um, it's doing things in a respectful manner um, and we've all been working to the same ends which has been good. It's actually, I think we've all worked really well together. There's been an intimacy to the small gatherings that I hadn't expected and have found really very honest and very moving. And there's also been the camaraderie with the funeral directors and with the crematorium staff that has felt very special and very precious as we all do our best for families through times that none of us have experienced before. And I'm sure that so much of that I will learn from, both the intimacy of the funerals uh, that we're doing at the moment and also the depth of relationship with the colleagues that I'm working with and I very much hope that in the months and years to come much of that will, will carry through and enrich the funeral ministry that we exercise. In these difficult times, finding creative ways to help people to grieve and to help people to pray has been vital. Of course, there are so many different ways in which we can pray and Thy Kingdom Come has seen us all exploring lots of creative ways to pray. For this prayer activity, you need five different coloured sweet. This particular kind work really well. 
think of the five people that you've been praying for. Friends or family. People who you would love to know Jesus better. And we're going to put the five around the edge of a plate. So bring them to mind. Think of their names. And then think of them being bathed in God's love. I'm going to pour, this is just water. Pour the water into the plate. And then we're going to watch what happens. So think of your five people. Think what a difference it would make if they knew the love of Jesus, the friendship of Jesus, the forgiveness of Jesus. And as we watch how the colours spread, think about the love we show one another spreading out to other people. The love we show is just a poor reflection of God's love. See how the colours are spreading until they touch. Gradually travelling in towards the centre. We think of the situation that we're in at the moment. We have friends that we long to see, long to hug, but we have to stay distant. But we can see in the colours as they spread here how the love spreads between us but it doesn't have to mix. We can show love to other people, even when we can't get as close to them as we'd like to. Jesus, we long for our five friends and family that we're praying for to know you better. As God's love washes over them, we pray that they would recognise you and come to know you active in their lives. In your name we pray. Amen.
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. This is the word of the Lord. And of course, our Church of England schools have also been involved in caring for individuals and families during the pandemic. Teachers and other staff have been going into school throughout the lockdown to care for the children of key workers, even during the Easter holidays. Some schools have helped to feed needy families within their community. And of course, we should pray for our schools as more pupils return to school tomorrow and in subsequent weeks. Now, please join with us in saying the words of the Lord's Prayer together. And we're going to do that by remembering last year at the Kingdom Come event we held at Portchester Castle, where we learnt to say the Lord's Prayer in sign language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. At Pentecost and continuing to pray, Thy Kingdom come, we ask today for the Holy Spirit to be Jesus' people in word and in action. Jesus, in his hometown of Nazareth, says that his work and God's will is to bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, and freedom to the oppressed. That is his work, and that is what we proclaim. Last year at Pentecost, we all came together at Porchester Castle. A great crowd of some thousands of us, bringing our Christian commitment and expressing our unity in ministry, in mission and in evangelism. This year things are very different, of course. But I think as we look back, the energy and the excitement of last year will be an inspiration to us as we work individually and in our own places to proclaim the coming of the kingdom and to be Jesus' disciples. 
So this year we are local, in our own communities, bringing hope and help, especially to those who are vulnerable or in need. It's the Holy Spirit always that enables, encourages and inspires us to do that, whether it's together, whether it's locally, whether it's individually. At Pentecost, I pray with you and for you, for the lavish gifting of the Holy Spirit, so that we can, with Jesus, bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, freedom to the oppressed, so that we can be Jesus' people in word and in action. Amen. The Holy Spirit of truth guide you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the coming of the kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.